Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Ako nga po pala si Police Senior Master Sergeant Charlene G. Nabwa. A former mobile forensic examiner and cybercrime investigator. Today, ibabahagi ko po sa inyo ang aking kaalaman tungkol sa basic forensic training for mobile device evidence extraction. So, bago natin simulan yung topic, ibibigay ko muna sa inyo kung ano yung training objectives natin. At the end of this lesson, the participants will be able to understand mobile device forensic, recognize the different terminologies of mobile device technology, learn the importance of mobile device forensic in investigation, cite the different types of evidence, identify forensic tools used and its essence, know the evidentiary value of digital information, and discuss the mobile device forensic extraction process. So, the main purpose of this lecture is for you to understand what is or how to conduct the mobile device extraction. I know some of you have already heard about mobile device forensic and how it is being done. Since the informations nowadays are already available in YouTube or Google, and also the mobile device evidence and what does it mean. Ano ibig sabihin kapag sinabi natin na mobile device evidence or digital evidence? Anong pinagkaiba nilang dalawa? And I know some of you also have no idea at all. So, this subject is sort of an eye opener of you. And I hope you will learn something from here. That would be a great help for you in the future, especially for those people who wants to join in the police service, who are soon to be an investigator in the future. For you to be able to understand what are these different terminologies being used, especially when we are talking about mobile device forensic, sometimes experience from the past, the investigator would rush to our office and ask if kung pwede man namin i-recover ang laman ng isang evidence sa mobile device na yon, or pwede ba nilang i-present in the court. So, anong gagawin? So, we always explain that we have a proper procedure. We should follow the protocol that would be acceptable in court. So, as far as I'm concerned, and based on my experience, some of the investigators are now knowledgeable on the procedure, especially when it comes to mobile forensic. So, they already know how we conduct in the office. What are the legal authorities that we require for us to proceed with the extraction and examination of these pieces of evidence? So I have So I hope that you learn something from what I've been show you today. But before we proceed, let me give a short explanation. Why I will only present to you a limited information about mobile device extraction since it's forbidden me to share to you some technical information or the actual video of how device evidence extraction is being done. We only show it to those who have or who are really intended to be trained as forensic examiner or cybercrime investigators. So now, the last part of my presentation, I will only show a raw presentation of how a mobile forensic tool conduct a mobile extraction of evidence. So moving on, let's have first the history of mobile device forensic. So forensic expert in the late 1990s and early 20s, forensic study of mobile devices started. 
they conduct research and study about data extraction or information extraction from a mobile device that they believe could be used as an evidence or could help in the prosecution of a suspect in a crime. So, as you observe, in this era of the late 90s and early 20s, cellular phones or mobile phones and other devices, electronic devices, digital devices already exist. So, marami na dun dati from that year. Dati, malalaki pa yung mobile devices natin aside from the telephones. So, nagkaroon ng mga mobile devices, mga wireless devices. So, from attachment case size, device hanggang, hanggang present, meron na tayong mga smartwatches that can be used for calls, internet, for calls, internet, ready devices. So, since nagkaroon ng introduction ng smartphone and other digital devices sa consumer market, so nagkaroon ng increase in the demand for forensic examination which could not be met by existing computer forensic techniques. So, hindi na inap yung mga yung kapag may nakitang evidence in a device, in screenshot lang, ipiprint, hindi po siya ganun, hindi po siya ganun, or hindi siya yung proper procedure na, na ngayon. Kasi, imimintin na natin yung ngayon, yung integrity ng evidence. Means, hindi siya na-altered at hindi siya na-delete. So, ano ang gagawin? So, kaya nagkaroon ng forensic study on how to properly obtain data and information in a forensically sound manner. So, as my topic goes on, mas lalo nyong maiintindihan why there is a need for mobile device extraction, process using a known or uh, accepted data court na mobile device forensic tool. So, next. Let's proceed with the terminologies. One is mobile device, which is also referred to mobile device or mobile phone or any digital devices that has storage and communication capability. So, one example are own mobile phones or cellular phones. These are called mobile devices. And aside from that, there are a lot of mobile devices that has storage and communications capabilities. Aside from cellular phones, so there comes the tablet, computer, and laptop. So those are considered as mobile device or computer in general. So next, digital forensic. Digital forensic is a branch of forensic science encompassing and the recovery and investigation of material found in digital devices. Often in relation to computer crime, under the digital forensic comes mobile device, forensic and computer forensic, since this subject focuses only in the mobile device extraction process. So we will only discuss mobile device forensic. So, mobile device forensics, it is a branch of digital forensics relating to the recovery of digital evidence or data from a mobile device under forensically sound conditions. Which means, forensically sound conditions means using a mobile device forensic tools. So, yun po siya. Yun po siya yung mobile device forensic. So now, um, number four, the GSM or Global System for Mobile Communications, Telecommunication. GSM is a cellular network standard used by majority of mobile devices around the world. So yung counterpart ng GSM, 
is the CDMA or the Code Division Multiple Access. So, anong pinagkaiba nila? So, when you talk about GSM, ito yung mga mobile devices or cellular phones that has a SIM card slot. So, pwedeng maglagay ng SIM card. Yung CDMA naman, unang example is the satellite form and another is the radio or yung handheld radio ang tawag natin. So, walang SIM card involved. So, yun lang ang simpleng pinagkaiba ng GSM, the Global System for Mobile Communications at CDMA, Code Division, Multiple Access. So, mostly... Ang gamit nila de, ang gamit natin dito sa Pilipinas ay GSM. Next to IMEI. It stands for International Mobile Equipment Identity. It consists of 15 digits unique ID or mobile devices that follow GSM standard. So GSM phones have a I M E I. Kumbaga, unique ID siya or ping fingerprint. Fingerprint ng isang mobile phone. Kung mapapansin niyo pag yung cellular phones is dual SIM, ibig sabihin meron din siyang dual I M E I. So next is SIM. It stands for Subscriber Identity Module. It is a smart card that holds very important network data needed to make successful connection to the cellular network provider. So, SIM or SIM card is subscriber identity module. So, without it, using GSM phones, we couldn't connect to the network. Hindi natin magagamit ang mga tawag at, makakap at makakapag-send ng message. So, every SIM card has its own identifier. SIM ng mobile phone. It has an IMEI. SIM card has a ICCID or the Integrated Circuit Card Identifier. Ito yung maliliit na number na nakaprint mismo doon sa likod ng card. So, nowadays, we have three tricat sims yung tawag nila the regular the standard the micro and the nano so meron din siyang nag-iisang iccid per sim so usually the consist 19 or 20 digits serial number per sim card that uniquely identify the card itself so walang dalawang sim card na magkapareho ng CCID, maliban na lang kung tampered yung isa o ganyan siya. So, next is IMSI, the International Mobile Subscriber Identity. It consists of 14 or 15 digit number that uniquely identifies a subscriber's account with a cellular network provider. Usually, IMSI or IMC can be seen after a successful examination na nakandak ng forensic examiner natin sa SIM card. So, dun magkikita ang IMC. So, um, later on, I will explain to you one by one kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng IMSI or IMC, also known as International Mobile Subscriber Identity. Next is SMS or also known as Text Messaging Service Component of most telephone, worldwide, and mobile device system or short message service. Ang MMS naman, or Multimedia Messaging Service, it is a standard way to send message that includes multimedia content to and from a mobile phone over a cellular network. So, ano pinagkaiba ng dalawa? When you talk about SMS, 
it is purely text messages. While MMS is a sender or texter, aside from sending text messages, it is also sent multimedia such as photos or videos to the receiver. So, yun ang pinagkaiba ng SMS at MMS. So, next is the smartphone. Smartphone, usually, ang tawag sa ginagamit natin sa na mode of communication nowadays. Bihira ka nalang makakita ng keyboard, yung may keyboard na phone, yung di keypad, pero may ilan din na mga tao na bot ginagamit ang keypad at tsaka smartphones. Bakit siya tinatawag na smartphones? Because it is handheld personal computer with a mobile operating system and integrated mobile broadband cellular network connection for voice. SMS and internet. Take note, personal computer. Dati when we in when we uh, understand personal computer, it is a desktop computer na katabi yung printer, scanner, may mouse at may keypad. Whereas now, the size of our palm, yung palad natin, meron tayong smartphone with a mobile operating system. Pinaka common na mobile Operating system is the Android, where yeah, whereas uh, Apple ay iOS. So commonly used dito sa country natin is the Android, the mobile operating system. Kahit anong mga brand kung may Android na nag function yung smartphone and integrated mobile, urban cellular network connection. For voice, SMS, and internet naman siya. So, yung tinatawag natin na smartphone, sa madaling salita, all-in-one na siya at nandun na lahat. Kaya, magtitik ng photo, magre-record ng voice, magtitik ng video, mag-search ng online, mag-send ng email, at mag-access sa social media platform. So, handheld personal computer. Take note, handheld personal computer with mobile operating system yun yung smartphone so so there is the logical acquisition and physical as acquisition anong pinagkaiba mostly ito yung procedure kapag magkandak na tayo ng mobile device extraction evidence so when we talk about logical acquisition Ito yung mga basic na hahanapin ng mga forensic examiner using the forensic tools na available. Basic. Ano yung basic? Ito yung call logs, phone contacts, text messages, internet history, or kahit anong recent na na-open na application. While physical acquisition, ito yung nilalaman ng buong mobile device, even the hidden files and deleted files, can be recovered. So, yun yung pinagkaiba nila. Take note, ang mobile device, kahit naka-factory reset yan, nagamit mo siya, before mo na factory reset, take note, there are still information na naritain doon sa phone. So, do not say that once you deleted the information or na na-reformat yung phone ay wala na siya or na-wipe na 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 yung information, hindi ganun yun. Because it can be recovered using a mobile forensic tools. Same as ng SD card which na delete yung mga files niya. You can download the application available online and try to, reco try to recover what was remaining on your file inside of SD card. So meron pa yung stored information kahit na na-delete mo na yun. But not 100% of those files na na-delete na marirecover mo. So, yun lang yun. Next is LTE. It stands for Long Term Evolution. It is standard for high speed. A 4G mobile communication standard. Ibig sabihin, once LTE ready yung phone mo or yung SIM card na ginagamit mo, mabilis yun. Next is 4G, which means 4th generation. 
mobile communication standard intended to replace 3G. Kung napapansin nyo, kapag nag-open kayo ng mobile data, may makikita kayong 4G at H na lang mostly ngayon, no? Bihira ka na lang makakita ng phone ngayon na may 3G. So, the higher the mobile communication standard, the faster yung communication mo. So, yun nga. Yun nga yung ibig sabihin ng LTE, 4G, at 3G. Uh, so, I have here a smartphone. Ano ba usually yung nasa smartphone? So, as shown, these are the call logs, text messages, email, calendar, address book, web surfing history, music, photos, videos, GPS data, data stored in apps. So, this information na nakastate dito, mostly dito nakukuha yung mga essentials or valuable data or information. Which is very helpful, lalo na kapag nagka-conduct ng investigation. So, lalo na kapag mga mabibigat na case. So, mostly, investigators would look up information that are stored on these call logs, text messages, and email. So, forensic examiner must also ask investigators kung ano yung purpose ng forensic examination. So, um, so meron niyang form na sinasagutan si investigator kung ano yung pinapahanap o kung ano yung gusto nilang makitang information na nakastored sa smartphone. So, next. In order for you to understand further yung hardware or from factors of mobile device technology, the common na ginagamit natin ngayon ay yung candy bar or yung size ng smartphone natin. Just like a uh, candy bar. Meron naman na uh, clamshell yung foldable. Next is ultrabook, tablet, and the slider. So, mostly slider sa pagkakaalam ko. Mostly si DMA phone si yung wala siyang SIM card inserted. So dito sa country natin, GSM phone and candy bar phone ang ginagamit natin. Moving on on as I mentioned earlier about GSM, only GSM phone have a IMEI or the International Mobile Equipment Identity. So typically 15 digits and usually nakikita itong at the back of mobile phone. Doon sa mga lumang phone na minsan pagbukas mo nasa loob siya. Sa likod mismo siya ng battery pag tinanggal yung battery. So this 15 digits is divided into cluster. Each cluster have meanings. So the first 8 that identifies the vendor and model of mobile device so, there are shortcuts kung paano makikita yung IMEI. There are certain codes para ma-identify mo siya like model and type of phones. Next is the serial number. Usually, consists of six-digit serial number or the specific unit of manufactured. Next is the... Next is the checksum or the authentication and integrity of IMEI. Mostly, one digit lang siya. So, next is GSM SIM. Meron siyang ICCID or the Integrated Circuit Card Identifier, which is printed at the back of SIM. It has 19 or 20 digits that can be found at the back of SIM card. So, as you can note, as you notice, in a certain SIM card, merong 89 major issue ID. Ito yung standard number for all tele telecom. The MCC or Mobile Country Code, dito malalaman kung saan siyang country na belong. Issued ID, account, account ID, checksum, MCC and country. So, next is the IMSI. Or MC consists of 14 or 15 digits. 89 major issue ID standard number for all telecom. MCC, mobile country 
could try to search it online and the Google will direct to the Wikipedia. So, nandun na yung lahat ng information na kailangan mo kapag sinerge mo siya. Yung MCC, MNC, and MSIN. So, usually, IMS ay, ay lumalabas lang siya as per forensic extraction. Next is the importance of mobile device. It have become an integral part of life wor worldwide, which is true. Since the existence of smartphone, the mobile device, naging bahagi na siya ng buhay natin because it brings as different places. Instance, instead of going shop to buy newspaper, news are already available online. And if you, if you want to learn, YouTube is available or Google is available and mobile devices used to save several types of personal information like username and password of your account, the saving account number of your online bank, and many other things or the photos and the videos that are stored on your phone's gallery it is also provide opportunities such as instantaneous access to information high resolution videos and photos and large storage capacity so another thing frequently it is also used by criminals terrorists and individuals to engage in the commercial espionage and sometimes these criminals and terrorist organization depends on these smart devices for coordination communication and research and also it is easier from them to conceal their identity and hide and plan activities of course if normal people or innocent people or civilian people uses mobile phones, syempre yung law enforcer ay gumagamit din. And also criminals uses also mobile phones. Mostly, the crimes nowadays are committed through online and sometimes using mobile devices. Why? Because... It is easier to them to hide their identity. Hindi basta-basta ma-identify yung identity dahil pwede naman silang gumawa ng fake account. Especially sa social media and pretend as different identity. Right? So, maraming pwedeng mangyari using mobile devices. Next is, why there is a need for mobile device forensics? There is a need for mobile device forensics because... Use of mobile phones to store and trans transmit personal and other information. And of course, there is an information that are not visible in the eyes. For example, as I mentioned earlier, yung hidden files or deleted files, what is the suspect or the subject person deleted is significant information that could be used as an evidence against him and his mobile phone. So, some of technician could not recover it and if he or she can recover and it would not be able or it would it would not be possible to use or accept as an evidence in court kasi tatanungin siya kung ano yung authority niya to conduct forensic examination ano yung basis niya it is belong to the law enforcement agency so hindi bawal yun so, there is a need for mobile device forensics because there is an information, significant information na kailangan ng special tools or mobile forensic tools. So, in having mobile forensic tools, of course, there should be a trained personnel to handle those forensic tools kasi itong trained personnel na to, siya yung magpe-present ng mga information sa court base doon sa nakuha sa mobile device na na-examine at gagamitin yung evidence na naka-store doon sa mobile device. So, ganun po siya. And mobile device are frequently used online transaction. For example, transaction of a fraud case or online fraud or online staffa. Fraud case in a private messenger between the victim and the suspect. So, how would you gather that? For example, the victim messenger 
account was hacked or he or she forgot his part his password how would you able to search those informations it would be a great challenge so there's a good reason to have a mobile device forensic tools especially its tools next is law enforcement and criminals uses mobile phone devices so there is a really need to have a mobile device forensic and its tools. So again, the following information, these are usually the common places where the forensic examiner or forensic investigator for search. So usually when these mobile phones run in a mobile forensic tools, it is usually looks for this also. This call logs, text messages, email, calendar, address book, web surfing history, music, photos, videos, GPS data, and data stored in apps. So this is the this is the basic tools. So with the SIM cards, only the call logs and text messages are the essential data that are usually gathered. So next. What contains digital evidence? So, ano yung laman ng isang digital evidence? It says here that any information being subject to human intervention or not that can be extracted from a computer or mobile device and must be in a human readable format or capable of being interpreted by a person with expertise in the subject. So, ano yung nilalaman ng digital evidence? So, after conducting a different examination, what usually contains a digital evidence? So, it is usually the information being subject to human intervention. Or, as yung na-mentioned earlier, which is the call logs, text messages, and etc. And then, it must be in a human-readable format or capable of being interpreted by a person with expertise in the subject. So, what are the digital forensic examples? Recovering of deleted emails, chat messages, and internet history files. Another is recovering of deleted text messages and call logs. Recovering evidence from formatted mobile devices. And last one is recovering of deleted or actual files such as photos, videos, and other files. So even the deleted files, take note, can be recovered by the mobile forensic tools. So who uses digital forensics? Number one is prosecutors. Prosecutors is rely on evidence obtained from a mobile device to prosecute suspects and use as mobile evidence. Next is law enforcement officer. They rely on mobile device forensics to back up search warrant and post seizure handling. So usually the reason for evidence who are law enforcers open bring mobile phones to the forensic examiner along with the documentation for the purpose for the purposes of gathering information and establishing the identity of the culprits behind the certain crimes and what are these crimes crimes such as fraud possession of pornography hacking illegal access virus distribution, homicide investigations, theft of or destruction of intellectual property, trafficking in persons, illegal drugs in their investigations, sexual harassment, software piracy, forgery, access device investigation. Another one who uses digital forensics is individual or forensic citizens. It is obtained the services of professional mobile device forensic specialists to support claims of harassment, abuse, or wrongful termination from employment. Why digital forensics? Why there is a need to have a digital forensic? 
or gaano ka-importante yung data or yung data ng digital forensic. Because any person can gather information from a computer or mobile device, which is correct. Anyone can gather information. So, madali lang mag-extract ng information from mobile device. But, the forensic element means it has to be gathered in a manner which make it rela reliable to a court or other body and the information has to become evidence. Yes, yung mga sinasabi ko, yung sinasabi ko kanina na forensically sound manner, so anyone can gather information from a computer or mobile device nung wala pa yung tinatawag na mobile device forensic. Law enforcement authorities often use the screenshot or text message. For example, in an inbox is stored that can be found in a mobile device and presented it as an evidence in court. And sometimes, when the presenter is without a proper document of the cell phone itself or the mobile phone itself in court. However, it can be challenged by the defense. So, there is a really need to conduct a mobile forensic. Kasi hindi mo lang basta-basta yan ipipresent sa court. Kasi tatanungan ka ng defense at syempre hahanapan ka ng butas ng defense. Tatanungin ka na, paano mo siya ginawa? Hindi ba? O baka na-alter or na-delete mo yung files? So, anong gagawin ang forensic examiner to make it reliable and credible? So, he or she would present it in a forensically sound manner. Anong gagawin? So, he will use a forensic tools which is known and acceptable in court. In court. So, dito papasok yung mga tools na ginagamit ng forensic examiner to extract information that could serve as digital evidence. Exact information from the mobile device. So, importante pa rin yung integrity of the evidence kasi mahirap yung magbibigay ka ng evidence sa korte na without a proper way or documents of conducting it in terms of proper procedure of investigation. Moving on. These digital devices can be considered as digital evidence, especially those informations stored in the computer. Computer has an internal storage and external storage, same as iPad or tablets, hard disk, tapes, external HD, spy cameras, CCTV, DVRS, DVD, removable storage devices or medias, flash drives, keys, dongles, modems, mobile phones, scanner, photocopier, and fax machine. So, lahat ng ito ay may capability na mag-store ng data or information and other are being used for communication. So, next is what are the types of evidential data? There are graphics, in internet, correspondence, email, reports, home accounts, communications, database and data files, diary, address book, organizer, faxes, finance and lifestyle. But no matter what type of data, it is just one zero one zero one zero one 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 or binary numbers. So each binary numbers had equivalent letters of or data. So computers read it as one zero one zero. But when it undergo in a forensically sound manner procedure using a forensic tools, then it can be interpreted in a human readable format. So, let's proceed to the digital forensic process. Since mobile devices are popular platform for a virus application, they can offer vital evidence in, for, in forensic investigation. These devices often serve as a source of digital evidence in crimes and contain personal information about an individual. 
such as photographs, passwords, and other useful data. So, what are the steps of digital forensics? Digital forensics involve the following. Seizure and isolation, identification, acquisition, examination and analysis, and reporting, and last one is court presentation. First is the seizure and isolation. It is important for the forensic examiner or the first responder to secure and handle properly the mobile device. There are certain guidelines or rules that should be followed. First is, if power, if power is off, do not turn it on. Place a smartphone in a sealed envelope before placing in an evidence bag to prevent being turned on. And, if possible, seize the mobile phone charger. Another rule is, if power is on, consideration should be given before turning off the device. There might be a password or passkey. Of course, there are mobile devices or small smartphones that are equipped or with password or passkey when they are turned off. Immediately switch to flight mode or place in a 4D bag. Next is another rule, if power is on. If you are not sure, seek professional forensic advice. Get the smartphone to the qualified forensic examiner as soon as possible with all ancillary parts such as power, charger, manual, spare memory, and etc. A smartphone must have batteries, check and regularly change or be kept recharged to ensure no loss of evidence. Next step is identification. This step involves identifying what type of storage media and what data or information could be recovered relative to the investigation of the case. So, forensic examiner identifies what type of storage media. My serial number, the physical pictures, the brand or type, and area make and both the forensic examiner and investigator of the case. Mag, Magka-come up to, to an agreement kung ano lang ang mga dapat o kailangan hanapin to avoid data privacy, privacy issues. For example, if the inver, in, if the investigator only needs our call logs and text messages to be extracted from the mobile phones, then the examiner will limit the extraction on the call logs and text messages. Another thing in identification before forensic examiner proceed to the next step of extracting evidence, he or she must be determined first. If there is a legal authorities in the conduct of mobile device forensic extraction, why? For example, for the victim. If she or he is the owner of device or the smartphone being turned over to the forensic examiner, there must be a written consent duly, duly notarized by a lawyer that he or she is allowing the unit was the capability of extracting the evidence that he or she authorizing to gain access on his or her mobile device or smartphone. Whereas for the suspect, must acquire a court order with specific needed information, indicated based on the order. Kung, kung ano lang talaga ang kailangan na hanapin, kailangan nakaspecified. At meron din tayong tinatawag na rules on cybercrime warrant. Merong warrant na a-apply si requesting agency. It could be the investigator on case or the chief of police or the certain police unit. That must be put into writing and request that 
address to the honorable honorable court or an application for cyber crime warrant for the cellular phone if the cellular phone on the smartphone is owned by the suspect Hindi po natin pwede basta-basta i-conduct ang mobile forensic examination sa phone na, sub, na subject of investigation. Lalo na kapag ang owner ay yung suspect. Kapag naman yung may-ari ng phone ay namatay, syempre ang next of kin ang magbibigay ng authority. Okay, next is the forensic examiner should identify the goals of examination. To make model, and identifying information for the device, removable and external data storage, and other sources of potential evidence. Kaya, kailangan nag-uusap yung forensic examiner at investigator. Next is acquisition. Dito na papasok yung logical at physical acquisition. So, what does it mean? Acquisition is physical or Remotely obtaining possession of the computer data from the original digi digital storage media through digital forensic imaging process. Imaging is the second phase and requires forensically sound procedures and validated tools. So imaging, it is some sort of copying the original content of the original evidence to another storage media para yung original evidence remain na unaltered. Means, nandun pa rin siya. So, ang ipaprocess ngayon ng forensic examiner is the duplicate. Dun siya magkakandak ng acquisition and analysis. So, there are tools being used for mobile device forensic extraction. Most common is the celeb Celebrite UFED, and they come in different sizes. And what is available now is UFED for, for PC. So, it will only function, it has its own license key. So, at the end part of my presentation, you will be able to have row view kung ano yung laman ng UFED for PC. So next is examination and analysis. It is evaluating the information or data recovered from mobile device evidence to determine if and how it could be used against the suspect. So sometimes, as part of my experience, after forensic extraction conducted by the forensic examiner and after the generation of report, Kapag nagawa, na, pag, kapag nagawa na, tapos napirmahan at naisubmit sa requesting agency, bahala na po ang mga investigator mag-apply. Yun lang yung usually procedure. When it comes to mobile forensic, sa discretion na lang mismo, niya yun ang pagpili. Kung ano yung mga part ng evidence, or hanapin yung part ng evidence base sa information na naibigay kung magagamit niya or not. So, in the reporting, there is a standard format. It must be in complete or readable standard format. Kasi, ito ang gagamitin as source of basis kapag humarap na sa korte at ipipresent na sa korte. In, court, in the court presentation, the step involves the presentation of evidence discovered in a manner which is understood by lawyers, non-technical staff, management, and suitable as evidence as determined by the rules on electronic evidence or any related law. So, the record generated from a mobile device extraction, extraction tools is different from actual submitted document in court. Kumbaga, binibigyan lang ng soft copy as part of the procedure. Soft copy yung ibinibigay ng forensic examiner sa investigator on case. So, kung magagawa siya ng detailed report, lalagyan niya ng clever presentation and explanation yung nilalaman ng report. 
at i-attach na lang yung report na nag-generate from the mobile forensic tools so that it could be understood by lawyers. Kasi kung ibibigay mo yung raw data na na-generate ng forensic tools, so it would be hard for the court to understand kung ano yun. So lalong mahihirapan si forensic, ex si forensic examiner to explain that if he or she provide kung ano yung nakalagay doon. So whereas, after conducting different forensic extraction, pwede siyang gumawa ng affidavit indicating the procedure at manners na ginagawa niya. Same as with other procedures, hindi lang po mobile forensic. Hindi lang po mobile forensic extraction. Kailangan din talaga ng supporting documents once na pinipresent sa court yung report. So, that was the digital forensic process. So, I have here a short video about tool, tools demonstration on mobile device extraction process using a Celebrite UFED for PC software. In the arena of digital investigations and analysis, mobile forensics is its own niche. Even though the data collected from devices such as smartphones and tablets is analyzed in a similar fashion to traditional desktop and laptop computers, the way in which the data is collected is noticeably different from the aforementioned devices. Mobile devices also include artifacts which are not ordinarily found in the average desktop or laptop computer. In desktop and laptop computers, to acquire evidence data, we use a method known as forensic imaging. Using a tool such as FTK Imager, a file type of .dd, .raw, or .e01 is usually the result. There are a number of other image file types, but these are some of the more common ones used in investigations. With mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets, you can't image them you perform what is known as an extraction. There are three different types of extractions. I will go over these in the sections to follow. Although there are a growing number of products on the market currently for the extraction and analysis of smartphones and other mobile devices, Celebrite is one of the most popular, especially with law enforcement. Celebrite is an Israeli product. Its headquarters is in Tel Aviv. Its North American headquarters is in New Jersey. Celebrite's extraction tool, the Universal Forensic Extraction Device, or UFED, was originally a product that was sold to mobile phone retailers to transfer previous existing phone data to newly purchased phones. The UFED was originally called the Universal Memory Exchanger, or UME36. It wasn't long before law enforcement saw the forensic value in this application. There are two versions of Celebrite's UFED product. These are the UFED Touch and the UFED 4PC. The UFED Touch is the tactical portable model, which can be taken to the field to perform extractions on scene. The UFED 4PC is the desktop version, which is installed on a forensic workstation. At the time of this video, a single full license of Celebrite costs approximately $10,000, with a yearly maintenance fee of $4,500. The purpose of the maintenance fee is to maintain all of the necessary drivers to extract data from the plethora of new and changing phone models and types that are on the market to the general public. In the following demonstration, I will perform a data extraction from the ZTE ZMAX Z970 Android smartphone using the Celebrite UFED 4PC. Celebrite performs three types of data extractions for mobile devices. These are logical, file system, and physical. The logical extraction is the quickest and easiest to perform as it is the least invasive. A logical extraction will provide you with messaging, contacts, call logs, application data, and media files such as music, 
video, and even voicemail. A file system extraction will include all of the aforementioned items, plus documents like text files and PDFs, as well as hidden files which provide information about the file system. A physical extraction is the most comprehensive extraction type, as it is the most invasive. It includes all of the aforementioned items, plus all of the unallocated space on the phone, which may possibly contain deleted files. This extraction type requires that the source phone be pre-rooted. In this demonstration, we'll be performing a logical extraction. From the Celebrite home screen, you'll notice three options for extraction types. These are mobile device, SIM card, and USB device. SIM cards are generally for older phones. The card must be placed into an adapter so Celebrite can read the data from it. USB devices usually refer to thumb drives. Thumb drives can either be forensically imaged or they can have their contents extracted. Since our target device is an Android smartphone, we will choose mobile device option. After clicking the mobile device option, you're taken to a screen where you must identify your device. At this point, you have three options to identify your device. When you identify it, the specific make and model, Celebrite will load a profile for the phone with a specific set of drivers in it, so that Celebrite may access the phone to do the extraction. If the wrong profile is selected, then the phone can't be accessed, therefore it can't have its data extracted. In order to appropriately identify the make and model of your phone, you can plug your phone in and have Celebrite auto-detected. If you know the exact make, model, and manufacturer, you can type that information into the search bar at the top of the screen. Or, you can search manually through by manufacturer through a list of almost 200 at the time of this video. Once you select the manufacturer, you can drill down to the appropriate make, model of phone. For this demonstration, I'm going to plug in the Android device and see if Celebrite can find it through the auto-recognize feature. If auto-detect is successful, we should see the phone in about 15 to 20 seconds after Celebrite queries its database. The device has been successfully detected and identified. Celebrite says that it is connected to a ZTE GSM Z970 ZMAX phone. We'll go ahead and select this phone. On the following screen, we have a list of available extraction types. From this list, we're going to select Logical Extraction. On the screen which follows, you'll see the items which Celebrite will extract marked with a blue check. On the next screen, you'll see a breakdown of the specific content that Celebrite will be extracting. On the right side of the screen, you'll see a, a white pane uh, with a title marked Target. This is where the extracted output will be stored. For this demonstration, we'll be accepting the default location. At this point, Celebrate is going to display a series of instructions on how to alter settings in the target phone so that Celebrate can maintain constant access to the device during the extraction process so that it will complete successfully. This may require you to interact with the phone numerous times during the extraction process in order for it to execute properly. I've already adjusted the appropriate settings on this phone. If you've not, simply follow the instructions that Celebrite has displayed to adjust your target phone accordingly. Since this demonstration phone is configured correctly, I'll go ahead and click Continue.
Here's a summary of what Celebrate just performed. So, that's the end of my presentation. I hope na marami kayong natutunan na pwede nyong magamit sa future o maging traba magiging trabaho nyo. And once again, thank you and God bless.